Good evening. Welcome to the Lewiston City Council regular meeting of Monday, September 22nd, 2014. Uh, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Before we move on to the pledge, um, I'm going to, I would entertain a motion to uh, change our executive session to include uh, section on litigation 67-2345 parens 1F. So moved. Second. Okay, I got a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries, seven to zero. Okay, next up, the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me in the pledge. Gentlemen, remove your caps. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, next up is citizens' comments. This is an opportunity for citizens to address the council on agenda items or other items they wish to bring to the attention of the council. Citizens are encouraged to dis discuss operational issues in advance with the city manager. And please, tonight, I guess we, we do have kind of a full agenda and we have a lot of people, I'm sure, willing to testify uh, in consideration of others wishing to speak. Please limit your remarks to three minutes. Do we have any citizen comments this evening? Name and address for the record, sir. Dennis Ortman, 510 Burrell Drive. Mr. Mayor and Councilors, I originally thought I was going to start this evening by offering you all a new pen, but you would probably have some fear of a former Councilor bringing gifts. I am not going to talk to you about your, the issues directly in front of you, because I am confident that you know you're well positioned for a great legacy. You certainly are in a great position to finish the library. You're in a great position to put a footprint that is even larger in Community Park, and you certainly this evening can lend your voice to human dignity. I came, however, to invite you and invite the community to an event that's happening on Saturday, and Mike has already uh, given you some introduction to this. We would invite you to the Orchid Awards that will take place at noon outside the Idaho, the First Territorial Capital Replica and Interpretive Center on 12th and Main. It will take place at noon and a very brief ceremony. And after that ceremony, I would also invite you to join historians Gary Bush and uh, Steve Branting who will be doing a trolley car tour it's a $25 tour. The tickets for that are available at the Bell Building, and there will be, there may be, if there are any left, an opportunity to buy some tickets on site, but at the moment we know that there are fewer than 15. Every year we in Lewiston have an opportunity to celebrate people who go above and beyond in the area of spending money and resources to respect history. They have, we have an Excellence in History Preservation Award that will go to uh, the New City Library, another that will go to Lewis Clark State College for the remodeling of the Thomas Jefferson Hall. We certainly will recognize uh, the efforts in the area of cultural heritage preservation of Mr. Stuart Johnson and the 2012-2013 high school students who were instrumental in helping us get the Capitol finished the Lewiston Tribune that has done a stellar job in its historical feature sections and, the, and in its support of history projects in the community. Also, Mr. Joe Strohmeyer for his heritage radio campaigns. And although we know that it is certainly a beginning of the project for Mr. Brigham, we're giving some recognition for a contribution to historical preservation, even though we know it's not finished, uh, for the work on the apartments that so many people thought would fall into total disrepair uh, at 212 Fifth Street. I encourage you to join us and would welcome all of you. It will be a delightful time. Please bring your uh, lawn chairs, join us for a few minutes, a great time to get together. We'll get used to using that area outside the Capitol to celebrate many events. And I would also, as I close today, I, I had an opportunity to spend some time at the memorial service for one of the former city council members, Bob Roberts. 
And I would hope that all of you would, would bow your hearts in some recognition of all the work that he did for the city of Lewiston uh, over the years. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Uh, my name is Craig Emerson. I live at 222 North Prospect Boulevard in Lewiston. Uh, at the last meeting, I spoke about the proposed new section to Ordinance 4614 and the fines of up to $1,000 and jail terms of up to one year. I stated at that meeting that I believe this proposal is a bad law. I would like to restate my position more clearly and address some of the comments made by other citizens and council members. As a preface to my opposition to this proposed change, I do want people to know that I am a Christian. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I believe in the God of the Bible, and I believe the Bible to be God's word. I don't want people to think that I am a homophobic religious zealot. There was a gentleman who spoke at the last meeting about the love he had seen in this community. There was a fundraiser held so that he could obtain a medical services to save his life and he professes to be gay. I was at that fundraiser. I contributed my time and money for his cause, and I prayed that the medical help he received would save his life. Several citizens pro supported this proposed law, even some who profess to be Christians. A common theme was that opposition to this ordinance is the same as opposition to the civil rights movements with respect to discrimination against blacks and other minorities. I have never supported discrimination against minorities. But this is not the same. The civil rights movement was about who people are. This issue is about what people do. There's a big difference between who you are and how you choose to conduct your life. There are gay people in my life that I love, but I can't agree with the way some of them live their lives because God's word says that an active homosexual relationship is wrong. I don't chase them down to confront them about their activities, but I hope to discuss God's word with them and love when the opportunity arises. I oppose this ordinance because it jeopardizes religious freedom. It can put citizens in the position of having to choose between being faithful to their religious convictions or going to jail. If I am a Christian and hold to the truths of the Bible, I should not be compelled to conduct business in situations that violate my beliefs, especially under the penalty of fines and imprisonment. This ordinance infringes the rights of citizens to act in accordance with their beliefs in the God of the Bible. Mr. Kleberg stated that he doesn't understand why this should be such a big deal. Mr. Kleberg, this country was founded on the principle of religious freedom. How can you state that a proposed law that jeopardizes the religious freedom of its citizens is not a big deal? Mr. Maldonado would have you think that no one will really spend a year in jail because of this ordinance. Mr. Maldonado, if these criminal penalties are not for real, why are they in the ordinance? Mr. Blakey wants to make sure the council is representing everyone, not just minority positions. Mr. Blakey, doesn't everyone also include those citizens who believe in the Bible and don't you intend to represent them as well? Even if you don't hold with the truths of the Bible, do you not intend to uphold the religious freedom of all citizens? I encourage all of the counselors who currently support this new law to reconsider your positions, especially with respect to the criminal penalties proposed. Are you going to support the abridgment of religious freedom on your watch? Are you going to support sending people to jail for exercising their religious freedom? Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, sir. Joy Schwank, 922 and a half Linden Avenue. Uh, Mayor and Councilman, thank you for this opportunity to speak. I'd like to speak about gravity. We can't taste it, touch, see, hear, or smell it. It does, it's not impacted whether or not we know it exists or whether we um, think it's outdated or believe we're somehow exempt from it. It will impact us. There are many other natural and spiritual laws out there that we cannot see, taste, feel, and they impact us. Loving parents create rules and set boundaries for their children because we recognize that they are not able to see all the impact of their decisions. Um, 
um, I recently heard a story. There was a war in a village, and when the war ended, people were finally able to get back to their lives, sort of. Buried in that, among that village were landmines. And so some people went out doing their daily work, would hit one of those, some were maimed, some were killed outright, some were killed slowly. One night, the leader of the village had a dream that showed where all those landmines were, were. So he wrote up the map and shared it with everybody in the village who would listen so they could avoid those landmines and live a happy life. Our God is a loving parent, knows, and he created us, and he knows what makes us tick better than anything else. Also created a map so that we could avoid landmines of life. Let's just look at a few. Biggest one, no sex outside of marriage. What would this do? Well, gosh, wouldn't have all these unwed mothers. Medicaid expenses would be much lower. We wouldn't need all this free housing. Wouldn't have broken families. Um, read a statistic earlier last year, 50% of kindergartners are in a single parent home, single mother home. It didn't mention if some of those were widows, but that's still ridiculously high. We wouldn't have AIDS wouldn't have all these other sexually tr transmitted diseases out there. Wouldn't need WIC, wouldn't need food stamps, wouldn't have all these destroyed lives. Another one, Exodus 20, 12. Children, honor your father and mother, whether or not they deserve it. But also, that's not just for the children. Husbands, you're supposed to love your wife as Christ loved the church. Treat her well, don't abuse her. Don't intimidate her. And wives are to honor their husbands and respect them. This is the, the picture of a healthy family. And a society is only as healthy as the families that are in it. And government does a good part to make this worse. You don't like your family? Get pregnant. We'll provide you free housing, free food, free medical. You don't have to relate to your family. You don't have to keep relationships intact. That's not a good thing. We're destroying families. If families would stay intact, we wouldn't have the broken homes. Once again, Medicaid would be lower, food stamps, wouldn't need the HUD programs. Make a huge difference. I realize these are all complicated issues and they're not really for government to solve. They're for the church to solve. Wow, church doesn't have that kind of money. Yeah, it does. Another rule that God said was tithe your 10%. Please, please summarize, Ms. Swank. Okay. Um, God also says that homosexuality is wrong. It's in the Bible. Many claim this ordinance will not harm or affect anybody. Tell that to the photographer in New Mexico who was forced to photograph a homosexual wedding. Totally against mor its moral um, beliefs. Or the cake decorator, also forced to serve at a homosexual wedding. Or the t-shirt preparer. Okay. So, once again, gravity. Consider carefully the gravity of the decision you're making. It has implications and it has ripples that you do not even know about or cannot see. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, good evening, Councilman. I'm Steve Coughlin. I live on Preston Avenue in the Orchards, and I want to totally agree with that gentleman who come down here. I also am a born-again Christian, and I want you guys to know, and everybody else in here, that is for this vote to go, go through. It's not only a flesh and blood vote, but it is a spiritual vote. One day, all of us are going to stand before God Almighty, and he's going to ask you seven people, men, why did you pass that bill? And the excuse that you're going to give him ain't going to matter one iota. 
So just think about it. Thank you, sir. Chris Cosby, Lewis in Idaho, um, 3032 Cyprus. <clears throat> Last meeting, the city council voted to approve a sexual orientation ordinance. Using the guise of fairness, government is now picking winners and losers. What happened to the marketplace of ideas and economics, of freedom to choose without government force? If I choose not to rent my property to a political ideology like the KKK, everyone cheers. If I choose not to rent my property to a sexual ideology, I will be fined and sent to jail. So what is the problem? Has anyone locally been discriminated against? No one on the council or in the audience knew of any incident. So why do we need an ordinance to solve a problem that does not exist? By passing this ordinance, government gets bigger, more intrusive, while choice and property rights are taken. Is government picking the winners the answer to everything? Do we need government deciding what freedom is and how we are to practice our sexuality? Big government, rather than bringing peace with this ordinance, brings us a stick with which both viewpoints can beat each other. I address this to the gay and lesbian community. Let me ask you a question. If this ordinance passes, will you be viewed as the people of the stick, people of intolerance to those of opposing views? If this ordinance passes, will the community view you as the good guys or the bad guys with a stick who are going to beat the rest of us into submission? Realize this, that the stick swings both ways. If I should perceive that the gays are discriminating against me in any way, I will bring charges and you will pay the fine and go to jail. Or you'll be sent to a re-education class, beg for my forgiveness, pledge never to do it again, and after groveling in the dirt, you'll only be fined $145. It gets worse. Let's look at exemption 38.5. Uh, which in part reads, moreover, this ordinance shall be construed and applied in a manner consistent with the First Amendment jurisprudence regarding the freedom of speech, association, and the exercise of religion. Exercise of religion. With that wording, you can't touch me, because if in the exercise of my religion forbids me from the promotion, support, or supply of what is viewed as an immoral event, I'm protected from prosecution. Now I have the stick. If you refuse me, do you want me holding the stick? I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw down the stick. Will you put yours down? All I ask is you to tell your city council to vote no and don't allow the stick to be placed in my hands. Has the stick ever been used? Jesse pointed out last week that it had. He said no one has gone to jail yet. But where it hit with the, uh, but where it hit, but where it hit with the reeducation and lesser fine, it's not a question of if the stick will be used. It's when and which group will be beaten first. City Council. A vote no is a vote for peace and freedom for all people. Let the marketplace of ideas and economics decide the outcome, not government force. Vote no, please. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? My name is Tom Shoemaker. I live at 1632 8th Avenue here in Lewiston. I've come to uh, urge you all to vote yes for the non-discrimination ordinance. Um, I've spoken before, I would like to add two things. My family came to the United States of America uh, because they needed to escape the results of religious liberty in another place. And they came here because they knew that in this place there was a separation of church and state that was upheld by law. Uh, in my family, 
that was very attractive, that idea. And they came here to make a life, and they stayed here. I'm not here to debate whether or not there is such a thing as church and state. I'm just telling you what my family's dream was. Uh, in this ordinance, we see that uh, this affords protection for uh, people who may be discriminated against for various reasons and for various beliefs. And it specifically states that that protection is for discrimination pointedly at people because of their sexual orientation or their gender expression, uh, not for any other reason. And we see th that uh, familial status has been added to this, which is a very thankful thing, and I support it heartedly. Thank you. Thank you, sir. My name's Amy Canfield. I live at 917 7th Avenue. I spoke before, but I, again, just want to urge you to pass this. Uh, discrimination has happened. We may not see it. There may not be signs. It's subtle discrimination. People may not feel free to come forward and tell you their stories because they might have someone react against them until they are legally protected. I would just urge you to pass this just for the basic rights of everyone. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Trey Turner, 4054 Fairway Drive. Um, I don't think it's any secret. You guys know how I feel on the ordinance. I'm speaking in favor of the ordinance. There's a couple things I'd like to address. Um, we hear a lot about what these fines are and these jail times. It, the misdemeanor that this ordinance covers is the base layer bottom misdemeanor, and it's there because the civil penalties that could be incurred are much, much higher and much greater than what a criminal penalty could be. It's actually there for the protections of the businesses, as I understand it. Um, as a misdemeanor, there's a few other laws within the city that you may not be aware of that are misdemeanors. First, um, ripping a library book has the exact same penalty. Nobody goes to jail for ripping a library book. Um, if you leave your garbage can on the street 24 hours after it's taken, that's the same penalty. You could go to jail for that but nobody does. Uh, if your dog um, defecates in the park, it's the exact same penalty. Nobody goes to jail for that. Nobody gets fined that much amount of money. It's there as a precaution, not because that's what people actually do. Uh, we had a conversation about rights. Um, there's a conversation about whether this ordinance will take away your right to do what you will with your property. There's a difference between controlling your property and um, regulation, as it were be. Um, does, I guess the, the analogy that I think of is, does a stop sign infringe on your right to drive your car? Um, I don't think that it does. Uh, maybe, maybe you disagree. Um, we also talked about the religious rights. I don't think that there's any question about whether you can uh, freely exercise your religion. Um, if you, if your religion says that you must hire only uh, slaves and family members, are you allowed to hire slaves? I don't think so. Um, your right to swing your fists ends at the other person's nose. Your, by refusing, by not being allowed to discriminate, that doesn't mean you're not freely able to exercise your beliefs. Um, there's a difference there. On the issue of whether we have a problem or not, I've heard from people that we do have a problem, but they can't actually talk about it. But my main point is that we shouldn't have to wait until there's something in the paper to deal with it. We shouldn't have to wait until we are the problem child and we have this big issue and we're all in the papers before we decide to take it up. We should be getting in front of that. That's what we're here for. Um, also, basic rights shouldn't, left be, shouldn't be left up to the free market. I'm sorry, <laughs> that's wrong. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hi, my name is Candace Martinez, uh, two, or 557 Park Street, Lewiston, Idaho. Uh, I didn't really have anything prepared, but as a gay uh, citizen of Idaho, I think to discriminate against somebody for being who they are, I knew I, knew I was gay the moment I like, looked at another woman. That's something about me that I cannot and will not change because you think your God is telling you that I need to be something else or your God is making you 
feel that you need to discriminate. You need to cast down your fists to hurt somebody or to be undignified. I think when I stand in front of God, being a Christian my whole life, he's going to say, Candace, my child, why are you here? Why? Wh- wh- what do you think you are worthy or made you worthy of being here, of being in my presence? And I'm going to say, because I loved another person with every fiber of my being. I was good my, li- my whole life. And when I made a decision, it wasn't based on hate. It wasn't based on their race or their religion or how they were brought up. It was because of who they are as a person, how good they are. I don't want to be that person that's standing up there that is standing behind hate. Hate isn't going to bring us together. If we can just accept that you're different and that you're different and everybody can just accept that we are all individuals here trying to come together as a unified front. If we can just be a unified front, don't you think that's the world you want to live in? That you can just walk down the street holding... If I can walk down the street in this town holding my girlfriend's hand, that's not just going to make me so happy, but it's going to show her that I love her. And you know how many times that I have to be like, honey, I love you, but I don't want somebody to be like, you, you dyke or you lesbian or go, go to hell because that's happened. I want to be able to hold her hand and be proud and to not be afraid that I'm going to be assaulted or hurt because I am who I am. I can't even describe or say how many times I've been discriminated against in the last five years that I've lived here. I've moved here from Oregon and I didn't even know what discrimination was. And I'm, I'm Hispanic. I don't, it's like, I've had to be like, do I really want to work at my job? Do I really want to live in this state? Because of how many times I've been discriminated against. And it's just, it's ugly. Let's just choose to live respectfully among each other with dignity and grace and peace. If you don't want to rent your place to somebody (laughs) Don't do it. If you don't want to take photos of somebody because they're gay, you're not being dragged there by a ball and chain. You're not being, you know, held with a gun. Could you please summarize? Yes. I think that equality for all and justice for all is what you guys should be praising and you should do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Hi, I'm Louis Sylvester. I live in Lewiston at 203 16th Avenue. Um, I'm in favor of personal freedom. I believe in freedom. I believe in freedom of religion. That being said, I also believe that my personal freedom does not allow me to infringe upon your freedom. And as soon as we start to cross those lines, we create the need for government. And that's why we have government, is to make sure that all of our freedoms, every citizen, receives the rights that are afforded to Americans. One of those rights is freedom of religion the freedom to believe what you want to believe. And if the government tells you something that you don't agree with, then you hold on to your belief and God will judge you accordingly. You're not going to go to hell because the government told you to do something. However, if the government doesn't stand for every citizen, then the government is not serving its purpose. It is your job as a government to protect every citizen equally. And if you feel that there are 
not need, there's not a need for laws that protect against discrimination. Perhaps it's because you haven't been personally discriminated against and haven't seen them. I haven't seen them. I have not been discriminated against. I'm a white man, I'm straight. It's easy for me. I walk down the street with my wife's hand in my hand and nobody yells at me, nobody says anything to me. I don't think I'm better than anybody else. And so if someone else is unable to experience those rights, I think it's your job as a government agency to protect those people. And I would hope that you would do that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Leanne Keller, 2328 11th Avenue. Um, please just remember that we don't all have the same religion and please vote for the equality of all people. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You have anybody else? If people want to speak, please kind of get in a queue so we can move on to our business this evening. Thank you. Hello, and my name is Paul Stewart. I live at 2875 Grandview Drive in Clarkston, Washington. Um, however, I am a native of Lowston, born on Main Street. Well, not actually Main Street, White Hospital, which was on Main Street. Um, Lowston High School, class of 1958, U of I, 62. I was away from the valley for 39 years, and I returned to the place I love. Um, I was married in the church across the lawn, and I'll be buried down the street. Um, I thank the council for this opportunity to give a few additional comments. I also absolutely commend this council collectively and individually for addressing this topic and with respect and an open mind. I just can't tell you how much I appreciate that. Um, it's unfortunate, however, that this council even has to to address this because if the Idaho legislation, legislatures had done their job and just added the words instead of stonewalling it, this would be probably a law for throughout the state of Idaho. So it's left to this council to be stand up and to address this and I, I admire you for doing that. In many cultures, uh, individual property values just simply didn't exist. I'm sure the Indians who sold Manhattan, the land that Manhattan is on, thought they really put one over on the white people. Uh, because it wasn't their culture to have individual property rights. Today we put up fences to protect and to define what is ours and to keep out dangers or perceived dangers. Now property rights are very important, but when a person or entity is hiring employees or serving meals to the public, they're in a public sphere. And at that point, it is my belief that, prop, that human rights trump property rights. I want to say that again. In those instances, when you're renting out homes and that type of thing, human rights trump property rights, in my opinion, every time. It is wrong to discriminate because someone is of a different color, different origin. They're fat or thin, too pretty or not pretty enough, married or not married a different faith or no faith, straight or gay, in other words, someone different than you. Why is this wrong? Well, it's wrong because all people deserve a level playing field. Person up here mentioned that he has not experienced discrimination um, because he's white, Caucasian, married, straight, all these things. But we also got a taste of how it feels to be discriminated against in the hurt and despair in this young lady's voice who was up here earlier. Um, no one should be defined by their sexuality with which they were born any more than a person born left-handed should be shunned or made to feel they are a second-class citizen or not worthy of our respect. They are our sons and daughters, our aunts and uncles, our brothers and sisters and neighbors. So why must we act now? This is not Selma, Alabama in the 1960s. 
It's not 1814 or 1914, it's 1914. When I was a living way, I, I read with a gasp while I watched the Aryan nation hijack Idaho's reputation with their message of hate and divisiveness. Today, this council has a rare opportunity to send out a clear message to the world that Lewiston, your home, and the city of my birth is a place of love and compassion where people are treated with respect on an open, even playing field. No one is asking for any more than this or any less. No special treatment or privileges. Our Constitution provides for it, and the Jesus I know teaches it. S sir, could you please summarize? I urge each other to reach into your heart and do the right thing. Please vote yes. Thank you. Can I step up again? No, sir. Okay. You had your shot. We're going to have one more reading in a couple of weeks. Nine, then please get in line, ma'am. My name is Colleen Cosby, 3032 Cypress Street, Lewiston. First of all, I want to say that this is not a matter of hate. It's just a matter of freedom on both sides. And I think a business owner should have the right to choose who they hire or not, who they bake cakes for, or who they take photographs for, whatever, without fearing consequences from that. The main thing I wanted to say tonight was to you, Councilman. Remember that you were elected by people here in Lewiston, not people in Pocatello or other places in the state or other places in the country. You were elected by people here in Lewiston, Idaho, and I can promise you and tell you that the majority of people in this city do not want this ordinance to pass. Please represent the people that, represent, that put you in the office and vote no. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I want to thank you all for... Name, it, name an address for the record. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Nancy Coughlin, and I live at Preston Avenue. And I want to thank you, gentlemen, for your time and uh, consideration of this matter. And I think we got into some areas that really didn't need to be addressed because I just feel like we just need to look at this. I don't, sometimes I get discouraged because I don't think the government a lot of times need to get into personal business. I think um, our properties are individuals. I think their business is their decision who they want to rent to and who they don't want to rent to is an individual decision and not other people's decision and so I agree I don't think that we should everybody make decisions for our neighbors I shouldn't be making a decision for my neighbor as who they want to rent to or not that would be their decision and so I don't think you should be making a decision for everybody in town who they should want to rent to. So I would ask you to vote no on this also. I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else? Okay, just so everybody knows, we do have one more reading. And we'll have plenty of time to talk. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate your comments, both sides of the issue. Okay, moving on to the consent agenda. Uh, I'll accept a motion to read the consent agenda, Councillor. Oh, it, do we have anything we want to move to item, the active? Item C. Item C. 
Item C will become active item J. I-H-I-J. J-J-K, right? Is it the voucher code? On the, is this the new one? Oh, yep, it would be K. Thank you, Pro Tem. Anything else? Okay. Accept uh, a motion to read the consent agenda as amended. So moved. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Accepting the minutes of the June 18th Parks and Recreation Commission, September 3rd Transportation Advisory Board, and the May 14th, 2014 Youth Advisory Commission. Approving resolution 2014-53 by title only. A resolution pursuant to Idaho Code, Section 67, 28082, declaring the intent of the City Council to award a sole source contract for self-contained breathing apparatus to General Fire Apparatus of Spokane, Washington, and providing an effective date. Approving Resolution 2014-55 by title only. A resolution accepting and approving an easement from Dale Marshall and Lisa Marshall, husband and wife, and providing an effective date. Approving Resolution 2014-56 by title only. A resolution accepting and approving an easement from Janice L. Buck, a single person, and providing an effective date. Approving Resolution 2014-57 by title only. A resolution accepting and approving an easement from the Port of Lewiston and Idaho Municipal Corporation and providing an effective date. <clears throat> Approving the second reading of Ordinance 4615 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston amending Lewiston City Code Section 35-32-4, increasing the speed limit on a section of Old Spiral Highway from 25 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour and providing an effective date. Approving the first reading of Ordinance 4617 by title only. An ordinance implementing the City Council's decision in ZC 0414 declaring that certain real property be removed from the low density <coughs> excuse me, residential zone R2 and included in the regional commercial zone C6 and providing an effective date. Approving the second reading of ordinance 4617 by title only. An ordinance implementing the city council's decision in ZC 0414, declaring that certain real property be removed from the low density residential R2 zone and included in the regional commercial zone C6 and providing an effective date. Approving the first reading of Ordinance 4618 by title only. An ordinance implementing the City Council's decision in ZC 514. Declaring that certain real property be removed from the low density residential R2 zone and included in the regional commercial C6 zone and providing an effective date. Approving the second reading of Ordinance 4618 by title only. An ordinance implementing the City Council's decision in ZC 0514, declaring that certain real property be removed from the low density residential R2 zone and included in the regional commercial C6 zone and providing an effective date. And approving the vouchers payable dated August 29, 2014 through September 11, 2014 in the amount of $1,270,557.90. Okay, counselors, the consent agenda has been read. I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as read. So moved. Second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Seven to zero. Okay, moving on to the active agenda. Uh, first up is the reason statement for ZC 14 or 0414. Kumar and AAA Washington, and this is approving the reason statement for ZC 0414. We'll entertain a motion to oh, make the reason statement. To approve. To approve. Okay. The reason why we want to approve it. In this statement or whatever you relied upon in order to uh, make your motion. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. 
Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Councilor Daniel. For the reason stated in the reason statement. Per PNZ, yes. I guess. Okay, so we've uh, motion to second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. Uh, same thing, except a reason statement for zone change 04-14. Oh. It's actually 05. 05, that's uh, my agenda was incorrect, I'm sorry. Uh, approving the reason statement for ZC 05-14. Entertain a motion to approve. So move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Councilor Daniel? Same reason for the for the items listed in the reason statement. Okay. Further discussion? All those in favor of approving uh, the reason statement for ZC 5 14 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Do we have an electronic device being run? Joel. Yeah. Joel? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Thank what's you. What's the score? The volume. Are the bears up? I was just curious. <laughs> they were one to the left. <laughs> okay. Getting back to business here. Uh, <clears throat> item C. Uh, potential third reading and adoption of Ordinance 4617 which is implementing the council's decision in ZC 04-14 declaring that certain real property be removed from the R2 low density residential zone and included into the C6 regional commercial zone. Uh, for Kumar, I would entertain a motion to uh, read ordinance 4617 for the third time suspending the rules, by title only suspending the rules. Thank you. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there a discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. Approving the third reading of ordinance 4617 by title only suspending the rules. An ordinance implementing the city council's decision in ZC 0414, declaring that certain real property be removed from the low density residential R2 zone and included in the regional commercial C6 zone and providing an effective date. Okay, hey, Councilors, Ordinance 4617 has been read for the third time. I'll entertain a motion to adopt resolution or Ordinance 4617 by title only suspending the rules. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Uh, item D, Ordinance 4618. Potential third reading and adoption, implementing the council's decision in ZC 05-14, declaring that certain real property be removed from the R2 low density residential zone and included in the C6 regional commercial zone. Again, for the same uh, area, I'll uh, entertain a motion to read ordinance 4618 for the third time by title only suspending the rules. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Approving the third reading of Ordinance 4617 by title only suspending the rules. An ordinance implementing the City Council's decision in ZC 0514, declaring that certain real property be removed from the low density residential R2 zone and included in the regional commercial C6 zone and providing an effective date. Okay, councilors, uh, ordinance 46, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 4618 has been read for the third time. I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance 4618 by title only suspending the rules. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Um, I'll just make one brief comment. Um, I appreciate staff bringing this to us so that we could get through the three readings. We heard about this uh, a few weeks ago and through procedural, or the process anyways, uh, the gentleman that's trying to put in a uh, 
a, a dialysis center was kind of held up a little bit and I'm, I really appreciate the council's votes on this so that Mr. Kumar can get going with this project and uh, thereby saving people a lot of travel time out of the area to receive their dialysis. So thank you. And that being said, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. Okay, so that's the next one. 14-60, thank you. Uh, next item up is uh, item E, resolution 2014-58. I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution 2014-58. To so read. Moved. Excuse me a second. Jamie? I'm sorry? On uh, 2014-58, the resolution? Yes. I thought we were just approving, not reading, or? It's not necessary to read a resolution the way it is an ordinance. So you can have a motion to approve in a second, and then you can go to discussion and then decide if you want to approve it. Okay. Is everybody clear on that? Entertain a motion to approve 2014-58, approving contracts for fire protection between the City of Lewiston and the Lewiston Roundup Association, Lewiston Livestock Market, Waller Enterprises, Lorraine Rabery, and Charmaine Allen. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? Just one question. Councilor Blakey. I uh, believe, Fire Chief, those are all one-year contracts, correct? Or multi-year contracts that they're signing now? That's right. Thank okay. you. Okay, so we had a motion and a second to approve. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, seven to zero. And uh, next resolution will be 2014-60. This is approving a, fire, a contract for fire protection between the city of Lewiston and ATK. I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Do we have any discussion? Hey, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries seven to zero. Okay. Uh, item F, or I guess that's, uh, I've got an old one apparently. H, item G, J, thank you. Uh, item G, ordinance 4614, second reading of ordinance 4614, enacting a new section to the city code to be codified as chapter 38, sections one through seven, prohibiting discrimination in housing, employment, public accommodations based on, upon familial status, sexual orientation, and or gender, gender identity slash expression. I'll entertain a motion to read ordinance 4614 for the second time uh, by title only suspending the rules. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Discussion. Mr. Mayor. Council Randall. I'd like to make a motion to make two amendments to the uh, proposed ordinance 4614. The, uh, I handed out to each councilor a uh, copy. On page four, under item G of definitions, uh, place of public resort, accommodation, assemblage. I would like to delete the whole section G. And that will also continue on to the top of the page on page five. And the second amendment, or second part of that amendment, is to go to page six on exceptions and add to B item three and four, item three being to private clubs or other establishments not in fact open to the public or four to religious organizations or entities controlled by religious organizations including places of worship second okay motion's been made and seconded to amend ordinance 4614 uh, deleting Item G and adding uh, 
two items to section 38.5 for exceptions. Motion to be made and seconded. Do uh, we have some discussion on that? Can I bring Mr. Mayor? Yes. The reason I brought up the, the two exceptions is under Title II of the uh, United States Civil Rights Act of 1964. Those two items are included in their exceptions under Title II. So I thought it was appropriate that we also include it in ours. Okay. Other discussion? Mayor? Yes. I'd like to ask the city attorney a question. Um, I noticed that part of the amendment is not only just adding those two sections, but deleting all of Section G. Could you tell us what the practical effect of that would be? Well, it would, Mr. Mayor, members of the council and city manager, it would um, completely eliminate any impact of the ordinance on uh, public accommodations, assembly uh, for public resorts, assemblages, or amusements. Mr. So. Mayor, I disagree. Sec uh, section C, full enjoyment of, should cover that because it goes into full enjoyment of shall be construed to include but not limited to the right to use, rent, or purchase real property, any service, commodity, or article, or personal property offered or sold by any person or establishment to the public, and the admission of any person to accommodations, advantages, facilities, or privileges of any place of public resort, accommodation, assemblage, or amusement without acts directly or indirectly causing persons of any particular familiar status, sexual orientation, or gender identity slash expression to be treated as not welcome, accepted, desired, or solicited. So that pretty much covers the same thing that G covered, except G gets very mm -hmm. detailed. We're talking about elevators and a bunch of other things. It is detailed and, and, and more inclusive. Mm -hmm. um, I would agree that there, there is an opportunity to interpret C to include all of that, but um, item G certainly is, is a lot more detailed and more specific in terms of what's protected. I'm not going to that point. Okay. <laughs> Further discussion? Councilor Melanotto. Councilor, um, just point of clarification. So if we strike G, that is the definition for on page one where it says that is a lot of feedback um, public accommodations it's in the title of the ordinance and so if we strike it in G which is the definition of that that would be my understanding that we'd also have to strike it from the from the title of the ordinance itself is that what you're intending to do no because it would still be protect it would still be included in the full enjoyment of well and also just point of retort um, we put familial status in there and nobody was comfortable moving forward without a definition for familial status so I mean I wouldn't be comfortable with moving forward with a public accommodations unless there was a definition for it so that would be I would not support your amendment Councilor Blakey uh, question for the city attorney we heard talk about protecting people's rights on both sides and making sure the issue is clear so all parties know what we're talking about. By taking G out, does it make it less clear? Mr. Mayor, members of the council, um, I think what Mr. Maldonado just indicated, this is a part of the definition section. So if you take it out, what you're left with is no definition of what a public accommodation is and an opportunity for it to be interpreted to exclude public accommodations, which was, I guess, my original point. Um, the ordinance talks about public accommodations in, in a number of locations, and without a definition, you certainly are left uh, with the opportunity to exclude that when it comes to the point of, of interpretations, especially when there was some specific act to exclude that if you pass the amendment. Um, full enjoyment simply it does reference public accommodations, 
But you don't have a specific definition of public accommodations at that point. So, again, in a, court, in a court of law, mm -hmm. we've heard a lot of talk about law tonight. In a court of law, again, this would protect both parties better. Better is not a good word to use, but it would protect both parties. Certainly, if you have a specific definition, it's, all, it's always better for both sides in the argument. If you have a specific definition of something, then it, it leaves less to the court to try to interpret at that point. Without it. Greater protection. Without it parties. presents greater problems for both parties. Greater I believe that gray would be area. Good. And does it, does it increase the gray area? Yes, I think it's confusing it without it. I guess I'd offer that, uh, you know, if if this if this passes, I mean, I've, I would be more comfortable having as many definitions and dotted I's and cross T's than lessening it. So that's where I'm at. Further discussion? Councilor Daniel. I do have a question. When I got in here today, well, it was my first time seeing this proposed um, amendment. Um, did Councilor Maldonado or City Attorney Shropshire, did you two discuss this before the meeting started? I, I, I haven't seen it. I, I mean, other than somebody this. just showed me what it looked like. Okay. You saw it, I saw it. So you guys didn't have any conversation brought, in regards to it? Councilor. Okay. I didn't get a copy of it, so. Councilor. It was brought to this meeting and handed out at this meeting. Okay. Further discussion? Okay, those in favor of amending Ordinance 4614 by uh, deleting definition G and adding to the exception, say aye. 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 Three. Opposed? Nay. Nay. We have a show of hands. For what? In favor? Okay. Motion fails uh, four to three. Back to the original ordinance. Uh, we're still in discussion. Councilor Daniel. I've asked this at every work session and uh, well, at the first reading as well. I'd still like to know, you know, as a government body, we're passing a law um, in theory to solve a problem, not create new ones. And I'm just curious what, what businesses are currently discriminating in the city of Lewis. And I, I sincerely would like to know, uh, one, because I'm going to be voting on something, but it's two, so I don't shop there. I, I certainly don't want to shop somewhere that is discriminating against people based on their sexual orientation. But I would really like to know what problem, what businesses are we trying to address? We're, I, I'm assuming this is kind of a message to the business community that they're apparently not doing their job. They're treating people unfairly. I'd, I'd just really like to know what businesses in this town are discriminating. Okay. Any further? Yes. I didn't think I'd get an answer. So I'll move on. I would like to propose amendment to section 38.5 exceptions um, that under under section B of that section, number three to read when this ordinance conflicts with deeply held religious views of the parties involved. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to amend ordinance 4614 by adding a, another exception under 38-5B. Could you state that again? Um, when this ordinance conflicts with deeply held religious views of the parties involved. Is everybody clear on that? Discussion? Councilor Daniel. Though I certainly wouldn't agree that discriminating against somebody is the right thing to do. I, I do believe that boycotts and education are a better way to end um, discrimination. I think that's worked out um, in recent years, certainly around the nation. That's why you've seen more and more states finally recognizing gay marriage. Um, you even have a council here ready to pass an ordinance that you can't even list a business that is actively discriminating in the city of Lewiston. However, I also believe as 
elected officials, we, we need to protect people's religious rights. And if, I just wanna make sure that nobody would be able to go to jail for up to six months for taking their religion further than Sunday service. Okay. Further discussion? Councilor Blakey. Question for city attorney. Um, that ordinance, the, that amendment that's being proposed, could it also be used, could it be used then um, to make an argument against any of the, uh, the uh, federal discrimination uh, where we talk about race, color, disabilities, sex? Could that, same, could that argument then be taken further and used there too? And say, my religion doesn't think has a problem with uh, color. That, those arguments have been made, Councillor Blakey, before. The, there are, there is a specific religious exemption that's contained in Title VII. It has to do with, it's called the pastoral exemption. Mm -hmm. But it applies not to individuals, but to religious organizations. So religious organizations have the right to hire someone um, in their organization if they're directly responsible, say, to religious education or pastoral uh, duties. Um, but that does not extend to, for instance, the janitor who's not involved in religious education. So that exception exists in Title VII um, right now for religious, bona fide religious organizations, but it doesn't apply to individuals. Uh, so individuals are, um, again, um, not permitted to discriminate on the basis of all the Title VII things, age, race, gender, um, based on simply a religious uh, belief that's how. Okay. I guess my, my only concern with that, Counselor, is that uh, I think that potentially opens up a can of worms and I'm not trying to make light of your comments at all, believe me when I say this, but uh, I remember having a, a, a rather contentious um, planning and zoning meeting, and uh, there was a, a group wanted to put a, a wedding chapel up in the orchards, and it wasn't sitting real well with uh, some of the neighbors. So one of the neighbors finally got up, and you know, we can, it might be a stretch, but he got up and said, that, uh, you know, hey, I guess if he gets to do that, then I'm going to start the Church of the Holy Storage Units and I'm going to build them right there in my yard. So maybe that's his religious conviction. I mean, where do you, where do you define that deeply held religious conviction? I mean, I, you know what I mean? I think the courts have also recognized um, established religions as well. Okay. Further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of amending ordinance 4614 by including uh, 30, section 38.5 under exceptions uh, B, number three, except when conflicts with deeply held religious views, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, motion fails four to three. Back to the original. And we're still in discussion for the second reading of 4614. Do we have further discussion? Councilor Collins. Mr. Mayor, I, I just kind of wanted to ask Jed on the, his original one because we voted for both those amendments at the same time with number three and number four that you had on section 38.5. Was, is this something either for Jed or for the city attorney, is this something that is already covered by Title Seven? Numbers three and four. I'm sorry, Councilor Cotton, are you referring to the proposed? The first, the first amendment, we, it was actually in two pieces that were, were put together, the, the, the striking out of, of section G, yeah. and then I believe I don't have the language for that, so I didn't get a copy, I'm sorry. so I'd have to take a look at it. Page six. Number four, 
is embodied in the religious pastoral exception um, for Title VII. If a bona fide religious organization can, in fact, hire people only of that religion okay. if they're involved in religious education or pastoral duties. Okay. Um, it does not um, extend uh, to some of the other things that religious, if, for instance, if they operated a store, they couldn't discriminate based upon religion, if there was a religious or even organization that operated a store. Private clubs or other establishments not, in fact, open to the public. Um, and I, you know, I have not looked at the Title II, the, the reference. Um, maybe Mr. Randall, I could pull that up. Um, there are, there's a case that involves the Boy Scouts um, in which they were allowed to discriminate um, based upon the fact that they, they provided a direct kind of educational service to the, the Scouts involved. And there, that discrimination was based on sexual orientation. So there is some case law that would support that, but it's more specifically worded in the case, and I and um, I could bring that case up for you. I have it, but um, so there is some some justification for strictly private clubs involved in some kind of service. So you're saying there, there's there's legal evidence to indicate that that number three here is potentially an appropriate amendment to this type of an ordinance. Uh, I, I, I guess potentially appropriate is an interesting sort of choice of words. One of the things that has happened when, the, when that particular exemption has been granted is that there's a great outbreak of private clubs simply to avoid having to comply with the ordinance. Um, so th there is that, that risk to be run. Um, and, I, and if what you wanted to do was to add some language that says something like consistent with the Boy Scouts of America, then I can get the citation for that. And some, there are some ordinances nationwide that have added that language in that's consistent with the Boy Scouts of America case. Um, you would probably cover what has legally been allowed. So, and I can get you that citation if you'd like. Mr. Randall, did you have a, a specific intention with these? Well, they were just because they were included in the Title II of the, uh, the Civil Rights Act, the 64. <clears throat> On that, private clubs, if you go to 42 U.S.C. Section 2000, Part A, Subpart E, it makes reference to private clubs. Well, I, I, I would say that... that uh um, I would be supportive of adding these amendments if, if the council would consider these as separate entities compared to what was originally proposed. Both three and four. Both three and four. So you're making a motion to include I would make a motion that, that we would include three and four as amendments to, amend. to, to the original. Second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to add under section 38.5 exceptions, uh, section B, to add three to private clubs or other establishments not in fact open to the public, or four to religious organizations or entities controlled by religious organizations, including places of worship, which I guess we've already said was already covered. I didn't hear the last part, I'm sorry. Well, it's already covered under Section 7 of the Civil Rights Act. Right. This proposed number four. Title 7? Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, yeah. She said not in that. That's yesterday. covered by, and it's actually covered in your ordinance as well. Okay. Um, under 38.5A, it should not be construed and applied in any manner consistent with the First Amendment. No, freedom of speech, association, or religion, uh, exercise of religion. Councilor so. Daniel. I disagree. It, it says it's not intended to alter or abridge other rights. Well, intended doesn't necessarily mean it does, and I think these would actually spell it out a little bit more clear. Okay. So motion's been made and seconded. Further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay. I did not vote here. I'm still thinking. Excuse me. <laughs> you haven't called the vote yet. The it's clock's obvious. ticking. I vote for it. 
Okay. So the motion carries six to one. Okay. So now we're dealing with an amended ordinance 4614 now including uh, two new lines under exceptions. Do we have further discussion? Can I, Mr. Mayor, before you proceed, can I have somebody get me a copy of that proposed amendment because I don't have that in writing? I have oh, two Calvin, thanks. for some reason. Yeah. That way I can change the Councilor Daniel. Under section 38.6 um, penalties, section A, I, I move that we amend six months to five days. Second. So this is an amendment to the amendment. We voted to amend, so now you want to add another an, amendment. This is an amendment to the current form of the ordinance. Okay. Five days. So we have a motion and a second. Discussion. Councilor Maldonado. Uh, oh. The penalties Sorry. are state code. Just want to remind everybody that this is the penalty for any misdemeanor. So we're changing state code for our own beliefs, I guess. Okay. Councilor Daniel. Well, then, um, a couple people brought up at this point that we're not going to send anybody to jail for six months for this. We're not going to send anybody to jail. Well, why don't we... Spell it out. We're not going to sell some, send somebody to jail for six months. <coughs> if we need to modify other ordinances that say if you tear out a page of a, out of a library book, we're not going to send you to jail for six months either. Take that off. Take that penalty off the table. If we're not going to do it, why have it in the law? What was the penalty for throwing candy? And I'm not trying to make light of the situation, but it was a misdemeanor too. I agree, and that's why I try to get it removed. I Mr. Mayor, members of the council. A misdemeanor in Idaho is defined as six okay. months in jail or thousand dollars fine. Thank That's you. the definition of a misdemeanor in, okay. in Idaho. But we can reduce that. We can we can go less. Councilor Blakey, uh, I stated a couple weeks ago, and I stated earlier that I think we need to leave the teeth in this, and leave the teeth in this ordinance for various reasons. And as I said before, I don't want Lewiston to become a lightning bolt for some. Some civic, some organizations, a hate group or any other organization that sees Lewiston as a soft spot where we can come in and put a sign up in the front of the window that says we don't serve and you can fill in the blanks and the worst case the person can get is a slap on the wrist, five days in jail or whatever the penalty may be. I, I think we need to send a strong statement that that type of activity is not welcome in the city of Lewiston and, and that's not who we want here and no. So I, I would vote no against that. Okay. Further discussion? Now, I forget, Councilor Blakey. Um, how long ago was that when, when that happened last time? I just want to make sure I have the dates right. That happened last week? No, a year I ago, thought two I... Years ago? What, what are we talking about? My discussion? Your hypothetical scenario of some out-of-town group putting up a billboard that says something. I don't believe I've ever put a date on it. I said, I don't want it to ever happen. Are you asking me when it specifically happened? I think you're baiting me. So but to be honest with you, so my, what I replied to you was, my, my answer was, I don't want it to ever happen. And you think it would? You think we have businesses that would do that? I think anything's possible in this world if enough money is put in front of somebody. I'd say I'd never thought I'd see the day that we as a country could have a group like the Westboro Baptist Church showing up at veterans' funerals. And I agree with Councilor Blakey on this one. That was their right, fundamentally, morally wrong. So. I'll not support that. And this ordinance wouldn't stop that? Probably not. So. Okay. So those in favor of the uh, proposed amendment changing the penalties to five days, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Motion carries five to two. Okay. Back to the original amended ordinance 4614. Um, we're still in discussion. I guess I'll uh, 
you know, we're going to be we're going to be voting on this. And I could see us as a society, this town, the citizens of this town are going to be voting on this. I, I can see this coming a mile away. And uh, I will say that I had a, a uh, conversation a year ago with one of the counselors. And at the time, I said, you know, I don't know that we need to bring this forward, have this thing enacted. We could throw it out to the public for a vote. Things have changed a little bit. And I have no problem voting on this. But again, I, I also fully expect that this will end up uh, just like what Pocatello went through, that there will be a petition circulated. People will get this on the ballot, and then we can see. But as far as I'm concerned, you know, whether you like my opinion or not, I'll vote for this ordinance. And uh, it is what it is. And I think that we also, <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm not, you know, 100% behind it. I, I, I don't th think this is the defining social issue of our time. But I'm willing to vote for it. Okay. I think we have bigger fish to fry. We've got other things to do. And we've been spending a lot of time on this, and I think that's important. I'm not trying to diminish how much time we've spent on it, but I also think that it would be appropriate. And uh, let's see where the chips fall. You know, if it gets overturned, it gets overturned. There's no skin off my back. So that's, uh, those are my comments. You know, we're, we're responsible for, you know, the legislative authority. We set regulations in this town. We, we're responsible for fiscal policy, things like this. I guess by extension, we should take a stand on social issues in this town. And whether it's through enacting legislation or not, or just making a moral stand in front of the public, you know, that's fine. I mean, you know, when you have a public forum, debates for city council, things like that, and you're free to state your views, people need to hear that kind of stuff so they know who they're voting for. So. Uh, with that being said, I, I guess I'll wind up my comments and turn it over. Councilor Blakey. Uh, I'm real happy the way the government's working right now here. Uh, some of you out there probably aren't real happy with me, and that's fine. You know, you have an opportunity three years from now not to vote for me, and that'll be fine. And if I run again, great. If I don't, we'll get a chance to whatever. But. More importantly, though, what I like the fact is we're debating this at the local level. We talk about less government. We talk about small government. Small government's at work right now. You would not have a chance to sit in Boise and have this discussion. They are going to invite you up to the podium for your three minutes of time. At best, you might get to send one of your, council, your representatives some email, and he or she or some aide will more than likely read it, and then maybe your representative will have a chance to see it, hear it. Local government's at work right now. And this, uh, what a wonderful opportunity we have to put this topic out on the table and debate it. And it's being debated all over the state. What are we, the, we'd be in the ninth city, ninth city, I believe, now. Wouldn't it be nice if other issues that we feel strongly about that happen at the state level, we don't get a chance to voice our opinion like this? So this is government at work like it should be. Like us, don't like us, we're out there expressing opinions. Further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of uh, Approving the second reading of Ordinance 4614 by title only, suspending the rules uh, as amended. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay, motion carries, five to two. Approving the second reading of Ordinance 4614 by title only as amended. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston enacting a new section to be to the Lewiston City Code to be codified as chapter 38, section one through seven, prohibiting discrimination in housing, employment and public accommodations based upon familial status, sexual orientation, and or gender identity expression and providing an effective date. Thank you. And thank everybody for their input and the council for a lively discussion. We have one more shot at it. So I expect to see everybody here in, when's our next? 27. October 27th. Because we don't have it on the 13th, so it'll be the 20, the 27th of October. And we will make sure everybody's aware of it. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Please. Gavel. Next up. Uh, item H, Ordinance 4594 for the third reading and possible adoption.
implementing the council's decision in CCO 4-12, declaring that certain real property be removed from the low density residential zone and including in the community commercial zone. Um, I'll entertain a motion to read ordinance 4594 by title only suspending the rules, but I'm just curious as if somebody had looked and seen who's actually signing this. It, well, you're going to sign it as mayor. It's somehow the third reading and adoption fell through the cracks, and so. Okay, because there's a different mayor's name on that piece of paper. Uh, well, we can. No, Didn't I think I was reading them, did you? I've got. Them. <laughs> <laughs> I have your name. I got. I have. Mine. <laughs> Kevin Poole's name on mine. You got to have an old copy. Thank you. I have. Well, we got two. You only have one, so. We'll change yeah. that. Let me apologize. It just somehow dropped. Okay. So do we have a motion? Yeah. Move. Second. second. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Read. Ordinance 4594, third time. By title only suspending the rules. All those in favor say aye. <laughs> aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Approving the third reading of Ordinance 4594 by title only suspending the rules. An ordinance implementing the City Council's decision in ZC0412, declaring that certain real property be removed from the low density residential R2A zone and included in the community commercial C3 zone, amending the official zoning map of the City of Lewiston and providing an effective date. Okay, Councilors, Ordinance 4594 has been read for the third time. I'll entertain a motion to approve Ordinance 4594 by title only suspending the rules. So moved. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, seven to zero. Next up, item I, out vouchers payable to Albertsons from uh, August 29th, 14 through 9-11, 14 in the amount of $247.73. Entertain a motion to approve vouchers payable with Councilor Daniel abstaining. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. Uh, I'll turn this over to Pro Tem Johnson. Next item on the agenda is vouchers payable to early bird supply from August 29th, 14 through September 11th, 14 in the amount of $265.21. I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. Motion's been approved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries six, uh, five to, five six, to, six zero to zero with one. Mayor Kleberg abstaining. Thank you, Pro Tem. Uh, okay, next item would be item K from our consent agenda, which is resolution 2014-54, declaring the intent of the council to award a sole source contract for a sidewinder pump track to progressive bike ramps of Joplin, Missouri. I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution 2014-54. So moved. Okay, motion's been made, seconded. Discussion? Yeah, Councilor. The reason why I asked this to be moved to the active agenda is I was curious. So this is gonna be going at Sunset Park, and is it gonna be just for scooters, or? Did you have more questions? Yes, I, yeah, I, just a couple. Here it is. Looks pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, Councilors. Uh, you have to apologize for me being a little hoarse. I'm still uh, recovering from my ducks beating the Cougs and being at the game on Saturday night. <laughs> It wasn't as much of a blowout as I thought it was going to be. So. And they cheated at the end, didn't they? Thank you. <laughs> it is what it is. Okay. Um, again, sorry, your question. Uh, it, can you just explain? So it's going to be placed at Sunset Park, or are there going to be, you know, we are, I'm assuming we're getting this because we banned scooters at the skateboard park. Correct, yeah. When we came to council this last spring to discuss when um, some individuals had come up and wanted to challenge the ordinance, uh, the Parks and Rec Commission at that time made a statement that they would look and see what they could do to try and meet that need. So then we had a facility available. 
This facility is um, designed for scooters and bike use. Um, it's not necessarily designed for skateboard use. So obviously our encouragement with this site will be for scooters predominantly, but also bicycles are available to use it. Um, the initial site that we would have it at would be Sunset Park. Uh, typically it takes the size of this one is gonna take about three to four hours to assemble or disassemble. Um, so it is something that we would put at a location for now, uh, but if we do find a, a better suitable spot, then we can move it. Uh, that's kind of the beauty of this piece. It's something that if we ha see a need uh, a couple years down the road or a year down the road in another part of the community, then it can be transformed and taken elsewhere. Um, it is a product that's been out for about six years, this company has, and they haven't had any, any returns or issues with it. So when I spoke to them about a warranty, uh, basically it's a standard two year like most other products are uh, anymore. Um, but as far as replacement, they haven't had to replace any of these tracks and, and guesstimate about a 10 to 15 year lifespan depending on whether you have it um, outside in the winter or if you disassemble and store it. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Is okay. there, um, it, you said it takes three to four out, uh, labor hours to move it. Is, are there any extra costs associated with that, such as printing something to move it? or If we change locations, no, we have equipment currently. If we wanted to change it to another site, we could load it up and take it there. So say there was a, <clears throat> say we had a little festival or something down there at the skate park. Mm -hmm. It would be fairly easy to include this with the festivities at the skate yeah, park? Yeah, that's something there's, there's we room can, there to Yeah, play. between uh, the city's uh, property line and the Corps' property line, there is some open space area there um, just to the uh, northwest of where the skate park is currently that we could fit it in at. Okay, Councilor Danny. Why not put it down, down by the skate park? Uh, we always could. I mean, I'm not set on Sunset Park. I mean, the beauty of, of putting it on a tennis court there is because it is a, a surface that is rideable anyway. Um, the downside of having it in, on a grass surface is that, you know, scooters can't immediately ride up onto it. Uh, bikes could, but also there's damage to the turf when that happens. So uh, that would be my, my um, ultimate location would be potentially like a slab somewhere, but we don't necessarily have that available. And as far as tennis courts go, uh, we do have a, a fair amount of tennis courts in the valley. And uh, Airport Park, as far as our two locations, is our most used tennis facility. Okay. Councilor Blakey. It's funny you bring up tennis. I was just getting my ear chewed on here not too, recent, not too long ago about tennis here in the valley. And this gentleman who I was talking to used to be the tennis coach at Pacific Lutheran, and he lives here in the Valley now, and, and talking to him about our tennis courts, um, I believe he would disagree and say the ones up at the airport are the ones that are actually in the worst condition of the three sets of tennis courts that exist in the Valley. I, I, I personally have not been out on either of them since my kids graduated from high school, so. Well, there's actually five or six different outdoor facilities that are open to the public. For tennis? In the Valley, yep. Yeah, you've got Airport Park, Sacagawea, oh, Sunset, correct. the high school, Clarkston, correct. and then... But you can't put this on another. school property. What's that? We're not going to be able to put this on school property. No. Oh, no. So uh -uh. Really, we're talking about yeah. two tennis courts that are public property, correct. that are public property, city yeah. property. Um, so my, my, I have two... Uh, have you seen, actually seen this? Have you touched it? Been actually seen one? One of these? Yeah, I actually rode a bicycle on one. Uh, <laughs> last uh, almost a year ago. So I've been following this company for a couple years now. I saw them at a national conference a few years ago and have been kind of paying attention to some of the um, some of the work that they've been doing. And obviously the sole source side of it is because really you can't find anything else around that's built out of this type of material and withstands everything. Um, Post Falls just put one in a few months ago. Uh, so they've got one locally. This one we would be getting at a heavily discounted rate because it's coming out from Missouri to Seattle for uh, it's a it'd be a brand new product but it would be used over a weekend at a at an event so opening that can of worms yes I was wearing a helmet <laughs> <laughs> that's assuming it would protect you okay uh, who's gonna uh, are we going to 
you know, we talked about enforcement earlier here already today, and we got to the skateboard park, and I understand now the the, the no um, the no sign preventing um, razors is now gone from their kids are joking that someone stole a sign preventing it. Are we not going to allow people on skateboards to use this, or do we kind of opening another can of worms here? We got the haves and have nots, and now we're, you're going here. What do we? Yeah, doing? I don't know if we're necessarily going to ban skateboards from this facility but it's really not a surface because of the transitions between each piece it's it's almost more like a scooter would be going over a, a bump or I kind of an think inverted that, I wouldn't think staircases are the appropriate place to ride skateboards yeah. either so I don't put anything beyond a skateboarder yeah. no as far as pump tracks go I mean they're designed for once you get going to not have to pedal or, or put your foot down your momentum is what moves you through this through this uh, surface, and the a skateboard just physically can't really do that on this surface. It'd be very difficult for them to utilize it. I mean, a few of them will probably try to get on there, but they're gonna find it no fun because they can't do anything. Cool. If someone does use a skateboard on there, is there any risk of damage? Not any different than what it might normally do. Uh, the only issue you might find is some of the ledges. Um, if it's a certain one part of the ledge on the straight areas, if they try to ride one of the ledges where you can kind of see it, it undulates up and down. Um, there might be you because of the trucks on the skateboard, you might see some a little bit of damage there. But Mr. Mayor, is it That's wood? Like, no, plastic. Yeah, oh, polycarbonate. Polycarbonate. Okay, so I'm sure it was in there somewhere. So sure. weatherproof, um, mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. Discussion? I have a comment. Oh, I, don't have, sure. I, don't, I don't have any more questions for you. If you okay. So I'll, I'll support this. I think it's a, a neat thing. I think it's a solution to a problem, but I also think it's a solution to a problem that unfortunately the majority of this council created when we banned scooters from a perfectly acceptable skate park. Um, and then we ignored a petition made up primarily of city of Lewis and residents. Yes, there were a few residents outside the city, but the skate park was sold as a community structure, not just a city. So yes, I'll, I'll support it, but it is a prime example of an unintended consequence of a bad law with a $40,000 price tag. Mr. Mayor, may I ask have another question? Yes, Mr. Barker. Sorry. Have you seen it in use? I mean, how many people have you seen in a public setting on it at a time? And, and the reason I ask, I'm on their web website and I'm seeing how many people are actually in the process of using it once. And I mean, the biggest picture I can find has six or seven at one time and people standing to the side watching. I mean, my, my concern would be it's Press there, it. but can we actually use it? You know, I mean, we're going to have a backlog of people waiting in line to pump around the track one time and the strongest. I guess, I guess I can kind of equate it to something similar down at the skate park when there's certain lines that people ride, you wait your turn. Okay. Uh, obviously, there's more area at the skate park currently, but that's typically what you might see down at the skate park is someone, a couple people want to go the same line and uh, they'll wait their turn to get through there. That's typically what I've seen, and I've talked to some other communities and they haven't had issues okay. as far as, as backlogs or whatever else. Okay, thank you. Okay. Further discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Seven to zero. Okay, that concludes our agenda. Moving on to unfinished new business. Uh, city Council comments. Do we have any Council comments this evening? I've got a brief one. Um, I got roped into giving a speech last Friday, a while back, uh, Liz Chavez, who's uh, well known for working with uh, people with disabilities and, and uh, recovery issues. And she'd asked me a couple months ago, and then as time got shorter, uh, to speak at this uh, Hands Across the Bridges event. And it's a celebration of recovery for a lot of people here in town. I had no idea, A, what I was getting into. B, I, I really don't have a whole lot of experience with those issues. But uh, I agreed, and, uh, and Mayor Warren from Clarkston joined me. And uh, 
for safety's sake, they decided not to hold their hands going across the Blue Bridge, which they've been doing for a while because of the traffic. But uh, we had it at Brackenbury, and uh, I got down there a little bit early, and I was amazed at the turnout. There was well over 150 people, by just kind of a brief head count, um, down there celebrating their, their sobriety, their recovery from whatever was ailing them. And uh, it, was, it was a celebration. There was a lot of fun things going on. They had a big banquet set up. And uh, I, was, I was really impressed with the, uh, the work that these people, was pretty much hosted by the North Central Health District, but uh, a lot of the uh, recovery clinics in town were there with their clients and stuff. And it was just a good positive event for the community. So I just wanted to share that with you. Anything else? Councilor Randall. Uh, this past weekend, I went to the Air Festival. Everybody had a great time. The kids were enthralled with the parachutists coming down from the helicopter. And everybody that went on the DC-3 had a really good time. And I wanted to thank a lot of people. Uh, I probably forget some, but uh, one of the big ones is Friends of the Airport. Those, those folks work very hard to get all this arranged. And uh, they had several other people that are not necessarily full-time friends of the airport, but they have businesses up there. And uh, some of the flying services and mechanic shops and stuff like that were involved in helping setting this up. And, and so, uh, yeah, it, all, it turned out very well. And it was a gorgeous day. Mm -hmm. So it, it worked out real well. And being that the county fair was going on at the same time, we got the uh, extra people from the county fair or folks for coming for breakfast at the airport, watching all the events and then going on to the county fair. So it turned out real well. They had a thousand people by noon. Sure. So it turned out real well. Great. Okay. Uh, city manager comments. Uh, Mr. Bennett. I have uh, one issue to bring before the council. We have been talking in the past about arranging a joint meeting with the Planning and Zoning Commission. And, uh, you know, some of the issues that have also been brought up that uh, are issues that they've been looking at as well had to do with the issue of backyard poultry. Um, so we are working on setting up a date. Um, I would recommend Wednesday, October 22nd. Um, that is a date that's available for the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, and uh, we would meet at the Bell Building in uh, uh, community development upstairs on the second floor. And um, I will double check the time. 5.30 is typically their time. But yeah, but you know, we could probably adjust that uh, to make sure everyone could get there, say maybe 6 o'clock. Uh, I'll talk with uh, Joel Plascon about that tomorrow. But uh, that would be the goal right now, would be to have that joint meeting with the Planning and Zoning Commission to talk about, you know, whatever issues the uh, council uh, would like to and maybe impart some direction to the Planning and Zoning Commission as they schedule their work for the coming year. Okay. I think it's appropriate that we revisit mm -hmm. the backyard poultry yeah. issue. Okay, advisory board and commission appointments. Do we have any this evening? Councilor Maldonado. I have one. Uh, Maureen Manshrek for the Youth Advisory Commission. Okay. We'll finally have a quorum if we appoint her. So So that's your recommendation? Yes, sir. Uh, second. We, we have a second. All those in favor of appointing Maureen Manshrek to the Youth Advisory Commission say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, 7 0. We have any others? Okay, work session agenda topics. Do we have any new ones? October? October 6th is our next work session. We'll have a couple of items on there. One will be to talk about the recent uh, decision by Percy to um, uh, reduce the amount of the contribution that the city of Lewiston, amongst other cities, is going to have to contribute for its older firefighter um, uh, union uh, benefit coverage that we had, retirement benefit coverage. Um, and then we'll also have some updates from uh, Mel Johnson at Nez Perce County uh, Emergency Services uh, about that service. And then we'll have uh, at least one item on the active agenda, uh, which will be to act on recommendations from the Planning and Zoning Commission 
on some changes to the Canyon Crest planned unit development. Okay. Okay, well that uh, concludes our agenda for this evening. I'll entertain a motion going to executive session uh, concerning labor negotiations and litigation under Idaho Code Section 67-23451C and F. So moved. So any motion been made and seconded? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion carries seven to zero. We'll take a four minute recess and we will not be acting on this after the meeting. Is that correct? Um, yes, we will be acting Sounds on like the meeting. We will be coming back into session. Okay.